Well, welcome back to Clint's workshop. Here we are in the workshop, as you can see, and uh, I want to get through quite a lot of things today and something a little bit unusual. And I was coming across uh, uh, this thing as I looked around the workshop. Can you tell me what that's of? Or what it is? Well, it's quite obvious what it is, I suppose. <coughs> <clears throat> it's a screw with nuts and washers. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because it's, it's something to do with the picture, the, the thumbnail, which you've, which you've seen, which is a, an image of a sailing dinghy. Now, people should have different uh, interests. And one of my interests, is, apart from the, the, this engineering business, is I've always been interested in sailing and boating. And that particular thumbnail <coughs> is an image of a Glen 8 ball. And it's linked to this. I'll tell you how. First, a little bit about the Glen 8 ball. The, that sailing dinghy is more popular, it, well it's an American, United States origin, and it's very popular in the United States. So anybody who wants to start d uh, dinghy sailing, it's fantastic. It's lovely, but I've sailed it myself. <coughs> First, I've got to make a few important announcements here. Um, and that is, we got some new, new subscribers this last month. Yeah. And we have, uh, I've, Go through them quickly. Bob Craft, thank you, Bob. We've got Paul Comper, and that was on the 12th of August. Thank you very much, Paul, for your subscription. And R. Culliner 63, oh, just over a week ago. That's nice, isn't it? And uh, we've got Rachel Phillip, uh, <coughs> four weeks ago. Thank you, Rachel, and thanks, Paul. And we've got to. Uh, um, Sam Crompton 32 thanks Sam for this I really appreciate your subscription <coughs> and also Jeff Stevenson on the 23rd of this month uh, so thanks Jeff and I uh, look forward to hearing from you again uh, and uh, in the comments sections and also uh, Simon Heat and uh, that was uh, on the 2nd of September and also the 3rd of September, which is more recent, is we've got uh, Jeff Hammer and also Simon Heat. Now then, it was already commented. And we've also got the latest one, which was on the 5th of September, which is Phil Noel. Well, thanks very much, Phil, for your subscription. And I have received your comment, <coughs> your request for assistance. Uh, because what's happened, Phil had to, he's just bought a new um, mini lathe and he's having, having, it's obviously having trouble facing and turning. And uh, the question is, can I help? Well, of course I can, Phil, and I'm going to. Mm -hmm. I shall be uh, <clears throat> sending you a, a comment um, on what to do later on, okay? Later on this, this week. Maybe today, if I can do it today. But if not, it'll be sometime this week. I will be contacting you. Okay, now, what I want to do now is to get back to the thing in hand. Uh, <clears throat> as I say, everybody should have different interests. Okay, we've got milling, we've got turning and things, and uh, uh, all sorts of hobbies. Some people go fishing. It's always nice to have something else to do. So, um, that's if you get frustrated with this. <laughs> engineering business and can't make things work. It, it's no problem because the thing is, things have not always worked for me either. You, It can be overcome. So, back to this. Here we are. This is the, uh, it is actually of a rudder fitting, which joins the tiller on a sailing boat. It was a sailing boat which I had a few years ago. 
and uh, most of them are handy these days, aren't they? All the floods and oh, terrible things in the United States. I feel, I feel so, so upset for the people suffering like that. And uh, anyway, I think that was <coughs> led me to look about boats and things. And it's a very interesting thing because it is it's very much linked to engineering. And this particular item was made by, well, I don't know this was made, but it was off a boat that was made, a sailing boat, it was made by a company in England. I bought it new some years, quite a few years ago. And uh, this was a rudder fit, this, this attached the tiller to the rudder. Now, it, it does look rubbish, doesn't it? It's all corroded. The reason why it's corroded is because <coughs> it's been made out of brass. Now, brass and seawater, they don't like each other. And I had this boat for quite a while, and I thought, there's something not quite right here. And I decided, I took this off, and this terrible condition so but look at it it's got screws it's got screws did all the way up now what happens is when you get a tiller so that's a part of a tiller it's not just a piece of wood but the idea is that you get two usual metal pieces and in this case it was phosphor bronze that should have been phosphorus bronze, but it isn't. Anyway, what happens is this. If you just think, oh, I'll just put a bolt through. Yeah, where, where's, the, where's the quality control gone? It's hopeless. If you put that through there, I'll put another one through. That's a screw. That's, well, that is a little bolt, but it's not, no, 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 not good enough. But what happens is this. Put it through there. Okay. What happens? As the tiller rolls up, it, that this is clamped on with a like this one with, with a nut. So as that's clamped there, holding them two pieces together like that, as it pivots up, it pivots the the whole of the of the tiller, which means when it's doing that. Those screw threads there, the screw threads there, it's making an impact on the rudder stock that it's attached to, making grooves in it. It's so pathetic. It's a brand new boat made to specification, and it was a well designed boat by Oliver Lee of Burnham. It was an Anderson 22 sailing cruise, sailed many, many miles in it. Uh, especially in the Channel Islands and I also said in the Mediterranean to very exotic places but the thing is I didn't expect this and you know when you're buying second hand boats you look for things but for a new one I didn't expect this atrocious pathetic attempt I'm really annoyed about it I told the boat yard as well they're not in existence now, but it was a well. It was a beautiful boat. Oliver Lee, the designer, he, I don't think he's with us anymore, unfortunately, but he did design a very famous day racer called a Squib with a retractable keel, and the Anderson Twenty Two had a retractable keel. Great. So this is what, what I overcome that problem, my mate. <coughs> and these are standard bolts, but it's no good. Because I'd still get still get those screw threads. So I I made one. I can't show it you now because it's on the bolts. <laughs> I don't have it. But I made a phosphor bronze pin to go in there. And then when it pivoted, when it, well, it pivoted on the pin actually because I didn't use a nut like that to tighten it up. <coughs> what I did, 
<coughs> I used uh, <coughs> a washer which I made something like that and this won't go over it but it, it, it fitted over it like that let me show you where the bolt went through there okay and then it was retained by a pin holds all through there with a split pin going through and that enabled the the whole assembly to appear as it should do on on the shaft so it, it didn't mark the inside of the rudder stock and they're very expensive these rudder stocks so I just had to tell you that because the connection is that when you've got a lathe you can do these things you can make um, alteration ends um, the this bit metal bit attached to the tiller uh, as a, <clears throat> they usually make them out of stainless steel now um, that's that's what they do uh, phosphor bronze is uh, it's expensive it's not really often used but anyway um, it, that's that I wanted to get that off out of the way and the other thing is that uh, let me see what we're doing Let's see. yeah <coughs> on that sailing thing um, people in England might not know about that sailing thing because it's, it's, it's American it's the, it's the first one that I've seen and I bought it and it was really 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 good and I've sailed it sails one in light winds and things and uh, an ideal beginner's boat so bearing that, that in mind all of you budding sailors and uh, for beginners and it's like beginning and, every, and everything um, I had a problem I, first dinghy I had uh, it was without any major sailing experience and um, I purchased a friend of mine said he wanted to sell his 420 <laughs> 420 racing dinghy well mm -hmm. it was like being like loose in an e-type jag <laughs> very 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 fast it's not really a beginner's boat and it's a trapeze boat as well and uh, I started learning sailing the hard way and uh, I remember the first outing I joined a club and everybody wanted to sail this boat so I was dinghy and I thought yeah it was the <coughs> it was only 420 that was there so I, I thought oh yeah okay I didn't know anything about it and one person came, approached me and he said for, can I crew for you <laughs> I'll just have to have a drink So let's say, could he crew for me? I said, no. <coughs> I said, I, I think I better crew for you because I don't really know what I'm doing. So I did. And I, I remember it was uh, what was called in the Frostbite series of races and stuff that season. It was cold. I think it was about February. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> yeah, frost and ice and stuff. And we, we set off and I noticed this young man had got a wetsuit on. No one else had, but he had. And uh, later I was told he was a, he was a club tear away. <laughs> anyway, we set off at a great rate of knots up the, this little more than a pond really compared to sailing. <coughs> Uh, it's big enough to do racing, but it's very difficult to uh, get to in a small space. You didn't have to make many mistakes. And when we were on, going on the broad reach, and suddenly um, he disappeared over the side. And 
house crying. I thought, oh, what's going on here? And the tiller broke. <laughs> it snapped. And he went to the other side. And I still got hold of the, uh, the jib sheet and the caps. It was inevitable. It, was, it capsized. And a 420, it's not easy to capsize. Quite difficult. When you want to capsize it, it's not easy to do. And I went in the drink, yeah. It was a bit cold. You can imagine, February in England. Wow. So he's bobbing up and I said, he said, okay, you know the, we've got to do the recovery drill. <laughs> so do you know what to do? I said, no, I don't. He said, yeah, all right. I said, no, no. He said, do this and he told but it, it was knowledgeable and I didn't need to tell him more than once so we did the recovery drill and we got the boat upright and the headed straight for the shore and I got out and I thought I'm, I'm going to finish with you know this sailing business it's no good and uh, I said come on I said I've got to get the boat ready he said no I said you go in the clubhouse, I'll tidy up. So I accepted his kind offer. I was in the clubhouse, I was freezing and um, um, went through. I had a shower, got changed and uh, thought it better, but I thought that's the end of my sailing, sailing days. And after a day or two, I decided I'm not going to give up so easily. And I didn't. I'll tell you more about that next time. In the meantime, you might want to like that. And uh, that should be coming up soon. So thanks for all your subscribers. I need some more subscribers, you know. I really do. So uh, um, I'll talk to you more about that later. And another thing I'm going to do is uh, I should be launching, launching. <laughs> Um, I shall be re releasing so shortly uh, my online training course for beginners in engineering and concentrating a lot on lathe work and general things like that. And so, those of you who are interested, drop me an email, express your interest, and uh, when it's ready for the launch date and the release date of this course, um, for the first 10 interesting people, uh, the course will be discounted, heavily discounted, for the first 10. So if, if you're interested, uh, it'll be coming up shortly when, uh, when, I, when I'm happy about releasing the, the course. And I'll make a note of your contact number and everything. Just send us an email, say you're interested. and. Uh, That'll be good, <laughs> and you'll be getting a good deal. So I'll, t I'll tell you more about it when it's uh, almost ready. Okay, so I don't know if you saw that one. <laughs> I don't think it is. I never know. It could be up that way. I, I never know which way they're going to come. But uh, anyway, um, what you need to need to. Do, I'm just, I just one other thing. I noticed that I've. Had, thousands of views these days and so if I only got uh, oh, we've got 205 subscribers <laughs> if only 2% of everybody that was looking at my videos regularly if only 2% uh, subscribe to my channel I'd have over 4,000 subscribers which which I need <laughs> and uh, uh, well, for monetize, monetizing the channel, I need 1,000. But uh, so, all you people are watching, subscribe to my channel. It doesn't cost you anything. It's really, really helpful for me. Anyway, thanks very much. I hope it's not been too boring for you people who don't sail. But it might set you off on a different tack. <laughs> I'm going to tell you more about that later because. Uh, Engineering and boats and things, it, it, it's interconnected. And I did an emergency repair 
when I was out at sea, miles from land. So I think more about that later. So in the meantime, you can watch that video. <laughs> you might like it. Thanks for watching and joining us again. Have fun. Keep safe. Bye for now. Catch you next time.